Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Mark Cervantes, and this is Serves Legal Morsel of the Day. We're going to try something a little bit different now. I'm going to start highlighting individuals that are in different neighborhoods of Chicago and the Chicagoland area and some businesses. Today, we have Tom Bizanis. He is the owner and founder of SRO, which is a restaurant down in the South Loop. Standing Tom, lonely. say hello to everybody and kind of tell us all about you and SRO. Well, good morning, uh, Mark, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, yeah, ironically, uh, March 1st of uh, 2020 <clears throat> was our 27th year anniversary of Standing Room Only on Dearborn Street. Uh, we, uh, the name is uh, uh, appropriate because when we started, we started with 900 square feet. We had 12 seats. Uh, back in 1993, uh, three seats were uh, smoking and, tw and nine seats were non-smoking. So um, that was our world. And um, uh, in 96, we expanded to a storefront next door, um, which was a jewelry store. And uh, now we have 1,500 square feet for the last um, you know, 24 years uh, with about 50 seats and 45 outside when our cafe is open. So um, uh, we've been, uh, I guess, what people call an institution in the South Loop, and we're very proud of what we've done, and we're very uh, thankful to, uh, uh, for the community's patronage for 27 years. So Tom, tell the audience a little bit about the South Loop and Printer's Row. I'm a North Sider, so it's, whenever I get south of Roosevelt, it's a little bit different for me. You're a little bit north of Roosevelt, so you're just south of Congress. So, Tell everybody uh, that's not familiar with the South Loop and Printer's Row what the area is like, where, what shops there are, what things there are to do. Uh, give them a little bit of a understanding of where the area is, where your uh, restaurant is. Sure. Well, um, when we first opened 27 years ago, we were, we were one of about three or four real you know, retail slash uh, businesses on the street. We had a... Um, uh, there was a, a, a Casey's Tavern, and there was uh, Moonrakers, and there was another little Italian restaurant. Uh, but otherwise, it was pretty, uh, pretty. We were pioneers back then. Um, there were the first true New York style lofts uh, on the street, the Donahue Building and the Franklin Building. Um, uh, but otherwise, it was uh, like I said, pretty. We had Jones uh, at the time, Jones Commercial High School. Uh, they had just uh, started really finishing up uh, the Harold Washington Library, uh, but we were kind of um, a quiet neighborhood, uh, not much very well-known neighborhood, uh, except for the uh, Printer's Row Book Fair that still takes place today. Um, uh, like I said, it was very a, a, a quiet enclave um, right adjacent to the busy, uh, just north of Congress, the busy uh, you know Central Loop Business District. So. We were pioneers in trying to open up a restaurant there, and then you know over the last two decades, uh, the proliferation of you know in the in the late in the late nineties, uh, Printers Row. I'm sorry, in the South Loop, Greater South Loop, um, was really one of the nation's like top growing areas. So uh, it exploded during you know this past two decades, and now uh, is home to so many high rises. Um, I think the South Loop over the last couple of years has built, uh, I think the, uh, in the square mile radius, like the most new rental buildings in the city. So uh, it's also home to what they call Education Row because you have multiple universities, uh, Roosevelt, Columbia, DePaul, um, and uh, uh, the expansion of Jones, which is one of the top schools uh, in the state actually. So uh, it's become really uh, the go-to place and of course, south of Roosevelt now where there's even more development. I mean, the, the density is, is finally growing uh, to a point where, um, you know, the, the community has, is stretching with it. In 27 years ago when we opened, kind of the border of the South Loop was Roosevelt. Now it stretches all the way to Cermak, which is, you know, the city's plan to connect with Chinatown and start connecting all these lakefront communities together. So it's been, uh, it's been a pretty cool evolution. So I see that there's been obviously a change in uh, demographic. There's also been change in the number of people down there, as you just stated. Uh, who are your normal clientele that uh, frequent the restaurant? 
So uh, I guess uh, in some ways there's been some kind of opposing vectors and other, uh, because of the expansion of the communities surrounding, uh, Standing Room only has um, experienced um, uh, ebbs and flows of growth. Um, but uh, as, uh, for instance, you know, some of our biggest, well, we are a big community restaurant. Uh, we, have, we have patrons who've been coming to our place since they were carried in on a bassin, in a, you know, in a bassinet. And now we're seeing them continuing to come back and be married and have children and still uh, patronizing our restaurant. But the business district really has been our, our clientele. And as the city has grown, uh, stretched out east, uh, uh, I mean, west, south, and north from, from the South Loop area, so have, of course, businesses and so have restaurants. So um, uh, when the Board of Trade uh, 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 trading floors closed down, uh, that, that, was, that took a you know, big chunk out of our restaurant. Um, uh, business, so we had to kind of reinvent and uh, reinvent to those who are sitting in cubicles up in their offices. So there's there, you know, um, it's it, it doesn't sound complicated, but it is because um, uh, people's behaviors have started to change over the last decade, where they don't maybe walk out very far very much. So we've had to kind of grow and adapt. Um, uh, and now in COVID, of course. Uh, so we tell, yeah, the, tell us, so yeah. how has COVID affected the restaurant? I know recently you guys just reopened this week uh, after the uh, stay-at-home order was put in place, you guys had to close. But this week you reopened for delivery and takeout. You know, uh, obviously all restaurants uh, are, are affected. How is this affected and how do you think you're going to be able to survive and move on after the stay-at-home order has been uh, lifted? Well, frankly speaking, uh, the way we're going to survive is to uh, uh, do what everybody else is awaiting, and that is uh, 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 some pay paycheck program money and federal funds, uh, SBA loans, to be able to continue on. I mean, you know, we have uh, our, our employees, um, uh, we've had the same employees for 27 years, and uh, uh, now we have to try to take care of our employees also. Uh, because we have a familiar relationship for all these years and the volume is just not there. So we're, we're, you know, kind of trading off who can work. We just opened up again. We were closed for two weeks after the dining rooms were uh, mandated to close. Um, and um, all the businesses were closed around us. So we're such a heavy business dependent restaurant. Uh, when there's nobody in their offices, then we have no customers. So uh, it's very difficult. And, um, yeah. So, you know, let's get you some business. So tell us what the famous or the must haves at the restaurant are. So after when people watch this, they can order from DoorDash or whoever you grub up, whoever you guys are using or stop by the All store. The mm -hmm. what, what should uh, what should they be ordering? Well, we're we're famous for our chicken sandwiches and our turkey burgers. Uh, and I've had both. So I can say they're both great. Uh, the, the Cajun chicken sandwich is probably the top seller. Um, uh, the, the Cajun chicken is a sandwich then, uh, that uh, when we have some of our large firms, uh, law firms, trading firms order, sometimes we would get orders of, you know, we need 200 Cajun chicken sandwiches, you know, in an hour. So our, our restaurant is a machine. We have, like I said, the stalwart employee base. Um, uh, our burgers are fresh Angus uh, uh, burgers. We have uh, really, we haven't used a frozen piece of poultry uh, or, or uh, uh, meat in 27 years. So everything is fresh, hand-packed uh, and cut. Um, great salads. We have a great vegetarian fare, uh, black bean burger. Um, so for basically the, everything, hummus. right? Basically everything. Unfortunately, now COVID is um, having us uh, maybe scaled down a little bit uh, as we have kind of, you know, we have over 50 menu items, but um, we had been thinking about trying to scale it down as business has, like I said, ebbed and flowed over the years. And now with COVID, we're probably going to, uh, in the coming weeks, target a, uh, a short list of uh, popular favorites and, uh, and you know, can try to continue on our, uh, our, uh, the great history that we have. Fantastic. Well, you know, you and I, we worked a lot, uh, a lot together uh, in our real estate business. So not only are you the owner of SRO, but uh, your agent at Compass, a real estate agent at Compass. I you want am. to tell the folks, uh, you know, in 
uh, a, a small piece of what you're seeing in the market and specifically down in the South Loop, if somebody was interested in living in the South Loop, what the uh, positives are down there? Well, uh, you know, obviously um, with some of the mandates, <clears throat> showings have been become a problem for all realtors. Um, uh, I am still seeing a lot of activity on the buy side. I'm a predominantly a buyer's agent and uh, we are still getting a lot of buyer leads of people who are going to be getting jobs once the, once everything opens up, uh, who have signed offer letters and going to be moving from out of state, out of the country to Chicago. Um, I work a lot with those types of buyers. So uh, on the positive end, we still do have a lot of traffic coming through uh, um, our website, highrises.com, Compass Real Estate and the Chicago High Rise Group. Um, uh, obviously, there's a little bit of, um, uh, like I said, a little tug of war between being able to get into properties and um, uh, people having confidence that they're of their job security. Um, so uh, even some of the showings I'm doing with people with their offer letters, sellers are being a little bit more inquisitive about, hey, are you sure these offer letters are gonna be good? in 30 days um, if we if we get a contract um, with your with your buyer um, so uh, i think you know i'm confident that those things will start to work themselves out shortly uh, we do see like a little little pause here on some uh, on, on other buyer sides waiting for uh, uh, what they may find is uh, you know a pricing change that may come from this um, but right now, uh, thank God, at least in Chicago, I think we have a little bit more stability than some other coastal cities. And uh, we're, you know, most of us uh, uh, in certain realtor strands believe that uh, you know, we still have short inventory, so we sh should have a strong third and fourth quarter here. Fantastic. Well, everybody, once again, this is Tom Bazanis. I'm Mark Cervantes. And everybody, make sure you guys patronize SRO Hotel. Can you give them the address again, Tom? Thank you. I just wanted to, uh, 610 South Dearborn in Printers Row, I just wanted to add to a couple of other things, and that is uh, uh, you and I have been, uh, uh, had a, a friend and a business relationship for 10 years, and I want I appreciate uh, our relationship. And you know the old adage, you know, you can pick, uh, you can't pick your family, but you can pick your friends. I'd like to add, you can pick your restaurants like SRO, and you can pick your attorneys. And uh, I'm very, uh, uh, I'm very happy that you're always in our, you know, in our corner. And uh, best of luck to you also. All right. Well, everybody, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Hopefully everybody stays safe out there and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.